guys welcome back to another video today we're going to be unboxing the pi cooler so the ice tower cooler and uh, this came from solomining.de i did order it myself so they've been very great with getting it here as quick as possible so they also added some stickers as well so this is from the pimp my bit axe kind of collection that they do and uh, yeah check it out i guess but they do a bunch of other things like uh, Nocta fans and stuff like that and the Copperzilla that you saw in previous videos. So, today we're going to be looking at the Ice Tower because I got some comments saying that you should try the Ice Tower as well to compare it. So this is just a regular bit axe that we're going to benchmark firstly and we're going to get some results in terms of the temperatures and stuff like that and then we'll move on to actually putting on the Ice Tower and comparing that to the regular bit axe. So before we get into unboxing all of that, let's thank the sponsor of this video, Crypto Miner Bros. Since 2018, CryptoMinerBros.com has been the premier site for top tier crypto mining hardware, earning the trust of miners across the globe. The prices displayed on their site cover shipping and DDP straight to your doorstep, ensuring no unexpected costs at checkout. They deliver to over 100 countries and even provide lower invoicing options to help you cut down on customs fees. Payment is a breeze with options like direct bank transfer or cryptocurrencies including Bitcoin, USDT or Ethereum. With over 250 ASIC options, they stock some of the channel's favorites like the Bitax, the Bitax Touch and the Avalon Nano 3S. Join tens of thousands of happy customers who rely on CryptoMinerBros.com for dependable hardware fulfillment clear pricing, and a top-notch service. Check out CryptoMinerBros.com today, link in the description. So as I said, this is the Ice Tower, and I only ordered the single kind of version. It comes with, it comes with this, which is a assortment of parts. Firstly, the spring pins, so to spring pin in, and then some of these, which are gonna hold the fan in place. And then you can see two little screws there, which is going to hold the 3D printed parts that we see here to the actual frame of the bit axe. We have previously talked about 3D printed parts. Obviously, it's very hard to get in the UK, at least to find somebody that's going to 3D print a part for a reasonable price. These probably cost maybe less than one cent to actually make, but it's such a low demand for it that people are going to upcharge you so much for these. So unless you have your own 3D printer, it doesn't make sense to actually have any of these 3D prints. Luckily, solomining.d does include this, but there is a company out there called IX Tech, I believe that will send you one for free, all of the 3D printed parts for these coolers and the other cooler that requires 3D printed parts. So they'll send it to you for free if you cover shipping. However, in the UK, it costs around $20 to ship it to the UK, so I'm not gonna pay $20 for two 3D printed parts. And that was the main reason that I didn't go for any of them is because of the 3D printed parts. So now that we have them, we can actually test out this one. And I believe that there's another one that is called like the low profile, but this is the uh, 52Pi that you see there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna test this. We're gonna benchmark it against this first and then see the temperatures and see how much they drop between this and this. So obviously the fan goes here as well. And yeah, so let's actually get this plugged in because this fan's not even actually plugged into here. So just like that. And then we can actually plug it in and get it benchmarked. So let's actually do that. My power supply isn't actually on right now, so I need to plug it in. So I know you can't see it, but we're actually benchmarking it over there. If I zoom out, I don't know if I can zoom out on this, but it's actually right there. So you can see all of this equipment here. There's a bunch of bit axes here, but the uh, bit axe is being benchmarked right now. So we plug it in over there. I know obviously you can't really see it, so it doesn't really matter, but we are going to benchmark that and let's just keep it on this angle and we're going to actually get it up on the computer right now and we're going to start recording that. So if we just click record, start recording right now and that should be it. So we should be recording the computer screen so you'll see kind of both views will mainly go with the computer screen because that's what we're looking for. 
so we can overlay them both at the same time. And then we should scroll down. So currently we are sitting at, let's actually make this fair. So let's go to default and default. Let's click save and restart. And then we'll see what the temperatures are for a little bit. Because we're saving and restarting or we'll go into the default or we'll go into default, that means that we can test what default is against, you know, the default of this. So let's just wait for a little bit to see what it kind of gives us in terms of the ASIC temperature. Remember, we're using the standard heatsink and a Nocta fan. So hopefully this way out improves it. One thing I do want to mention whilst that's kind of running up is the copper things here, whatever they're called, copper rods. I believe that they should have two more running through here. That would help with heat dissipation a lot more because it's running through this copper rod. That's what's going to be on the chip. And it doesn't really look like it's got too much surface area. If you're blowing the fan through here, for example, the fan, if we just bring an old fan here, you can see that the airflow is mainly going through the middle of it, not through the actual copper rods, which are probably going to be the things that most dissipate the heat in these. So I have questionability on whether this is actually going to be good or not, but I guess we'll see. So first thing, whilst that is actually spinning up, let's just actually put on a bunch of these. You can kind of see it in the background and monitor it. And the ASIC temperature right now is 56.9 and the voltage regulator is 49. I'm expecting the voltage regulator to be actually worse, but it seems like the voltage regulator always heats up more than the chip if you start overclocking. So just a little more on that, we are gonna be overclocking or we're going to be setting it to default and then the same test that we did with the copperzilla where we're going to put it to 625 or something like that and then we'll check what the temperatures are and everything so this requires i should see the setup here okay i think that's everything so First thing that we need to do, I think we should actually put these on. So very small screws that are gonna go through here and then they're going to attach into these little holes that you see here. So let's try to get that to focus, these two little holes. And the orientation should be, it's gonna be flat like that. So, I'm assuming it's going to be like this. So one thing I will note, very loose. So there is a little bit of like leeway in terms of that. And if you try and push it down more, it's just, it just kind of goes into the 3D print. Maybe we'll just stick with that, I guess. We'll sort it out later on. But yeah, let's do the same with this as well. So it is supposed to pull onto something in there. I think that's the main thing about it. Is that it is supposed to pull on to there's a little like lip in there but if i'm going to be honest that is not great and this is my fear that i have with 3d printed parts is that they're just not machined to the same kind of precision i guess than certain other parts but let's put that on as well so weirdly this one is pretty stable but this one is a little bit of movement on it. So that's the 3D printed parts put on. And if you just check the temperatures, it's kind of stabled out now that we're looking at it. 65.6 and 52. So ASIC temperature is 50. So ASIC temperature is 50. Sorry, 56.4. And then voltage regulator is 52. So I just realized we can't put the fan on either. But we'll have to unplug that. So let's unplug it. Let's benchmark those as like our figures, and then we'll see what the difference is between the two. I've just forgot now that we need to actually do an overclocked one as well. So let's get the figures for that as well. We're gonna be doing these settings at six to five. Click save and restart. And let's try to get these settings up for there. So these are two, or these are spring pinned in through the holes there. And then these are going to be holding the fans. 
So let's let that run up and then we'll come back when we kind of have a steady out temperature for the ASIC chip and the voltage regulator. We'll also make a note of the RPM as well. So we'll put that into a spreadsheet. Okay, so we have now benchmarked both of them. We've recorded them down so you can see the results at the end of the video. But this part of it is just going to be us taking this off. So spring pins, got to take these off. So it's sort of fly buzzing around in my room. So just ignore that if you see it in the background. So pushing these out. And the same with this one. Push that out. So there we go. Take the fan off. So we're gonna have to redo the, the paste. So there we have it. So what do we need to do now? We need to take off the, the fan from here. So let's grab our other one. So obviously in the last video where I was repasting things, people were saying, you know, it really does matter about the thermal paste and stuff like that, but like cleaning it off properly every time. But you can see the amount of times that we redo this is pretty much you know, every other day because we're doing different videos. So that's the main reason why I just can't be bothered to clean it fully to uh, for every video, basically, because we're doing it so much that it doesn't really matter anymore. I know it might matter incrementally for the overclocking, but I think for this, it doesn't really matter too much because this is, I'm hoping, going to be far superior. But just how far superior is the question. So now next step is to actually put the fan on. I believe it goes this way. So let's put these through. I'm thinking you're only actually gonna need two for this, but we'll do all four. And I don't think it really matters too much on the, the whole placement of the thing. Like if two of them are off, it doesn't really make much of a difference as you can see there. And then the next part. So obviously a bit of a weird orientation and you've got to figure out which kind of angle you want to put it at on the actual bit axe. So I want to say it's going to be that way, like that. But let's actually move the fan as well, because that is on the down part. So let's put it upwards. So there we go. That's our orientation that we're focusing on. And then we're going to be going like that, I believe, yep, like that. And that shouldn't be in the way of anything that we see there. So let's put some thermal paste on it and then let's actually attach this to it. We'll probably come back after we've done all that, so. Okay, there we go. One thing I wanna note is that spring pins, the ones on the fan side, I would suggest you do that before you put the fan on because they are slightly bent out of place, so. Yeah, they should be still holding the correct amount of pressure. It looks to be. Like they still flick through. It's just, uh, I don't know. Now, that seemed like a design flaw putting the fan there if you're going to put spring pins there. As you can see, they are kind of like clamped down by the uh, fan. But yeah, that's fine. It looks to be good by now. And we can plug the fan back in there. So now let's get it hooked up to the computer and then we'll bring it over to the computer after we've benchmarked both of the results and you guys can see the difference. So I'll just zoom it out so you can kind of see us plug it in over here. So there we go. It is uh, officially on uh, over there. If you can see that slightly over there, right there. So yeah, now let's head over to the computer and see the results of all of that. So currently we just switched over to the last overclock that we were going to test and we have the results here. So we have the regular heat sink that we have with the frequency and voltage and then we have the ice tower. So in the next video, we're gonna be doing a comparison of the ice tower to the copperzilla. So seeing which one is actually better. Currently with the regular heatsink, you have a power draw of 17.1 and then ice tower is still the same power draw as well. So 17.2. However, the chip temperature is about a drop of seven to or six to seven 
in terms of the degrees. However, weirdly enough, the VR temperature is actually higher on this standard default overclock. The fan RPM is lower. I do have a theory about the V regulator temperature. Obviously, with the heatsink, the air does flow past the V reg copper things that we have on there. So that might be contributing to lowering the temperature with a higher RPM. And we kind of seen similar results where if air doesn't flow across them at all, then the V reg gets very hot. So overall, definitely more, I wouldn't say efficient because the hash rate didn't really change, but efficient in terms of the fact that you don't have to blow the fans as much and it preserves the chip temperature way better. And then with the overclocked version, so 625, you have a power draw of 20, and this is 19.5, not really that comparable. And then you see a drop in temperature of 60 to 52, and that's the same sort of drop, around 8 degrees. And then again with the V regulator, the same kind of problem is happening with the ice tower that you see there, because there's no air going through or at least across the V reg, it gets very hot. But the RPM is also slowed down as well, so from 5,400 down to 3,900. So even then, you're going to preserve the chip's health whilst overclocking if you want to with the ice tower. As I said in tomorrow's video, we'll be comparing the copperzilla to the ice tower. We'll probably keep the regular heatsink numbers in here as well in that next video. But stick around for that to see which one I think is the best. We might do just kind of like an ultimate heatsink battle out because we have the black heat sinks as well we have the ice tower we have the copperzilla we have the regular one and we don't need to add two more onto this or two more figures so let me know your thoughts on this if you have one of these personally they are better than the regular heat sink but the only problem is the 3d parts so it's up to you if you want to go get one i'll leave a link in the description if you want to from solomining.de i think so yeah make sure you like the video and subscribe for more content like this